Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Tails. Thanks for returning, and I got another story coming this way. It's regarding about YouTube itself. Uh, what you may or may not know about it. So please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and that like. And let's get on with the show. We all use YouTube, even if we don't upload our own videos. It's the most dominant video sharing website online right now. It remains popular enough even though the website has gone through some drastic changes since it was brought out by Google. The format has been repeatedly redesigned, advertisements are now everywhere, and most controversial of all, users are now forced to sign in with a Google Plus account. A decision that exposed everyone's true identity for the first entire online world to see. Although most users seem to hate the new changes when they first happen, they will eventually stomach them due to a lack of satisfying alternatives. So we keep watching YouTube videos in spite of all the times we grumble underneath our breath. But what if you were told that most users on the site are not real? That a big chunk of what you see going on, YouTube is not authentic at all, and that some of the most popular users don't even exist? This may sound strange at first, but keep listening. Since Google bought the website, they have proven time and time again that they don't care for their users. They harassed YouTube users until they agreed to sign up for Google+, or eventually just forced them to do it against their will. They also cater to the needs of big industries, which resulted in them overly commercializing the site. Since Google came along, Users have had to deal with constant advertisements on the website and have their videos censored over ridiculous copyright rules, such as having a pop song playing in the background of their videos or making a short fan film. What most people don't realize is how far Google is willing to go to keep some level of control over the users. To help influence and manipulate the real users, Google secretly created fake users and has them pretending to be real. Some of the people on the site are real, or at least used to be. This includes the people who signed up before the Google buyout, and the users whose channels stand a little chance of being noticed, or at least becoming a mainstream hit on the site. But those who are popular on the site are all really fake users, even the people who claim to be honest bloggers at home. These also include people that may have their own website or podcast outside of YouTube. Many of them are actors hired by Google following a script written for them. Their interaction with each other is all planned and rehearsed. If they have their own popular website or podcast, then it's highly likely that it's secretly being paid for by Google. Some pre-Google buyout bloggers and undiscovered users who show potential of becoming popular are offered a chance to join Google. If they do so, they must follow a script written for them and never upload a video without getting permission first. In exchange, Google will promote them all over online and make their videos easy to find. If they turn down the offer, then Google will make sure their videos will never be seen again. All their videos will be removed under false claims, and eventually, the user will be banned from YouTube. Believe it or not, that's not even the strange part. Here's where things start getting weird. Some of the fake users you're seeing are actually CG characters. They are computer-generated people made by Google, using technology that they have kept for themselves. Google has access to some of the most advanced technology in the world and connection to major special effects industries. They are looking for bloggers who will simply follow orders and are appealing to social media. This can be hard to do, seeing how some people may betray them and leak information. So they started literally creating their own people who will only do what they want and that they can never fear being betrayed by. Their voices are actually from a computer. The room they are sitting in is just a digital background, and the person is just a perfected CG avatar. It's confirmed that marketing industries 
have used computers to create unrealistic people before. Most of the models you see in magazines have been digitally altered and exaggerated to the point that they can't possibly exist in the real world. Digital voices are known to the public as well. For example, in Japan there have been virtual pop stars whose voices are sung by a computer. The bloggers who are talking to you through a video are simply using a more advanced version of this technology. These bloggers are all products created by Google, created to be attractive, funny, and appealing to the average user. Their purpose is to attract users to the site, sell them things, and sway public opinion. Both the actors and virtual users are meant to keep people online distracted and in the dark without even realizing it. The weirdness doesn't end here. A big chunk of the people in the comment sections are also fake. This is not to say that there are no real internet trolls, but there are less of them than you think. Most of you know of those spam bots that appear in the comment sections, offering a link to a suspicious website that will most likely give you a virus. It's no secret that those people are just bots programmed to leave random links. But the secret is that Google has access to AI technology. A while ago, Google bought Boston Dynamics, a robotics company that was originally working with the US Defense's department. In reality, the two had been working closely together long before the buyout, and many backroom deals had been made between the two. Boston Dynamics robots that caught the world's attention the public was unaware that they also created AI software to go with them, but Google used it for their own agenda instead. What was never revealed to the public was that Boston Dynamics was successful in creating AI software that could perfectly mimic a real human mind. This AI program can exist on the internet as its own online entity. They can read and understand comments and articles as well as watch videos. They can talk to online users as if they are real commentators. They can look up information faster than a real user and download it all into their memories. This may make them seem like skilled debaters at first, but they process the information so quickly that they can malfunction, sometimes having a hard time grasping what they had just processed. Google uploaded the AI software into both YouTube and their own search engine, which is part of the reason why they made it a requirement to use Google Plus to log in to YouTube. The software is programmed to create three new AI entities for every real YouTube user who creates an account. This way, the AI users will always outnumber the real users. The AI are all programmed to share whatever opinion, beliefs, and even personal taste in pop culture that Google wants them to. This way, Google can sway the real users into accepting whatever they favor. Since there are more AI users than real users, they can create a sense of online conformity and make real people more hesitant to speak their opinions. The AI was originally meant to be the mind of the perfect soldier. A soldier who would only obey orders, could not feel pain, and is not held back by any emotions. Anyone who holds a view that's in opposition to Google's agenda will be directly targeted by the AI commentators, which will begin harassing the real users with tactics such as cyberbullying, spamming, and in some cases, even hacking their computer to upload a virus. This also encourages real users to join in with the AI to target the unfortunate user who had spoken out. At the same time, the AIs are programmed to like and praise the fake video users by leaving positive comments and liking the video, which in return will encourage real people to do the same. All of this is meant to help control the real users who are unaware how they are being manipulated. This way, 
Google can guide people into buying certain products. For example, if a movie comes out made by a studio that has asked Google for help with advertising, then Google's fake YouTube users will all react positively to the movie. The actors and CG bloggers will promote the film on their channel or on their website and podcast if they so have one. While the AI commentators will like the same videos of the fake bloggers praising the movie, the AI users will leave comments acting as if they had just seen the same movie claiming that they had loved it. They will also hit the like button to the trailers or anything else that has to do with the movie, such as a parody video or a positive review. All of this will lead the real users on into wanting to see the movie for themselves. If a real YouTube user leaves a comment or video presenting the movie in a favorable light, then the AI users will hit the like button so that more people will see the video or comment. If a real user didn't like the movie and expresses it through a comment or video on YouTube, then the AI users will thumb it down so it has less chances of being seen. Google does not plan to just use this tactic for marketing. They are also using this to help shape our political, religious, and philosophical worldviews as well. For example, if there is a candidate that is willing to work with Google, then they will have their fake users promote him or her. The actors and CG bloggers will praise him and begin to promote the candidate on their channel. At the same time, the AI users will rally around the candidate, hitting the like button on anything that portrays him or her in a positive way. They will show intense hostility against anyone real who disagrees with them. But like any comment that they are programmed to agree with, from that point on, the real users will be encouraged to follow the candidate and agree to things they normally wouldn't have. This doesn't just concern Google's attempt to influence public opinion, but it's also a matter of security and privacy. Say what you want about Edward Snowden or WikiLeaks, but they confirmed that for the past few years, Google has been working with the NSA. The AI users don't just act like YouTube users, but can also keep track of real ones. Each time you unknowingly talk to an AI in the comment section, it shares what you had typed and how you acted to all the other AI users. All this information is also sent and stored into files used by the NSA to keep a good track record of you. If you say anything that the NSA would deem you as a possible threat, then the AI will begin to monitor you. They will start replying to your comments and videos, pretending to be other users, trying to engage you. In reality, they are testing you, trying to see if they can get anything else from you. If you think you can avoid them by simply not using YouTube, guess again. They can leave the site and track you down elsewhere online. If you start talking on an online message boards, then they will follow you there and log in with their own accounts. If you use Gmail, they can just simply read your mail. They can even get into your phone and start texting you, pretending to be someone you know. Now, to be fair, they have caught some real terrorists and pedophiles using this technology, but the NSA is not fully looking out for the public interest either. With this tactic, they can also oppress free speech and online movements that are critical of both the government and Google. Google and the NSA can simply respond to an outcry against them by switching their fake users on to oppose anyone who is in opposition to them. If someone tries to start the movement to get the public aware of a thing such as online privacy issues and corruption within the NSA, the NSA could just ask Google to have all the fake users portray the real ones who protest as uneducated conspiracy theorists. This will instantly create the illusion that the real people are a fanatical minority. They also will continue to record information on you, even though you're not a real threat. Some people have gone missing or found themselves wrongfully targeted by law enforcement 
after saying the wrong thing online. The AI users that are watching you might confuse troll comments or sarcasm for a real treat. In other cases, they may target you just for holding views that people in power want to oppress. Also, don't be too shocked if Google will start using scapegoats and have their fake users blame everything on a selected group of people to distract you from their own corruption. This all leads to one final question. Will Google try to take down this message? Anyone who shares this message may become a target of the fake users, but it doesn't matter. Google has already determined that you won't do anything about it. They have seen how real users do little whenever they are mistreated by Google in the past. They made notes on how real users hated having their identity exposed, but eventually accepted it. They remember when they enforced censorship rules on you or allowed the NSA to read your mail and that no one did anything about it. You just kept using their service, so they have rationalized to themselves that even their fake users are fully exposed to the public, that the reaction will be the same. People will be angry at first, maybe even threaten to use a different search engine and video site, but they will eventually accept everything fake about it and continue to use it in spite of the risk. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this story. It really starts to make you think, don't it? Anyways, I hope to see you guys again, and please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It really helps out the channel more than you know. Thanks, and see you next time.